Hey everyone, today I'm here with Kat from Optimal Workshop and we have been talking about user research and really researching research is kind of the uh, topic that brought us together. So Kat, tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and what you do at Optimal Workshop. Cool. So Hello, hi everyone. Uh, so my name's Kat Hardesty. I am from way down at the bottom of the world in Wellington, New Zealand, and I work for a company called Optimal Workshop. We're a company who creates and designs online tools for researchers and designers. And my role there is the discovery lead. So I look after a multidisciplinary team of user researchers, designers, and data scientists. And I'm also a user researcher myself and have been for over a decade now. Um, so when I can, amongst everything else, I dive back into research, which is what I've been doing this week. Awesome. Well, thanks again for being here. Uh, thanks for having me. You know, just to dive into it, what is UX research to you? UX research, it's about understanding why, that's being the main question. So why people do what they do, react how they react, why they say they want what they want, what's actually underlying people's reactions, emotions and behaviours. So it's about getting that understanding so that we can then do, uh, create experiences that are intuitive, that meet emotional needs, that help people with the tasks they're actually fundamentally trying to complete while taking into consideration the context in which those are being done. Right, yeah. And why do you think it's so valuable for companies to invest in this process? Well, if you're a company, you have customers. If your customers don't like you, you won't have them as long. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's probably the most basic one, right? It's um, we're past the age where it's all about um, production and industrialism. We're past the age now where it's all about price in most industries. You can't really compete with price, it's raised to the bottom. Now more and more people are realising it's about experience. It's about um, how much people have a connection to what you're doing, whether it's an actual connection to your brand or your industry or whether it's just you're not getting in the way. Can you point to any specific you know, examples of success stories you've seen where people did invest in UX research and it you know, changed something for their company or just you know, really helped them overcome some type of obstacle? Oh, I see, now my mind goes completely blank when you ask that. <laughs> yes, I can. I can point to heaps. Can I think of them off the top of my head? Oh, um, oh let's see now. I was working with one client and they were a startup and it was really interesting working with them. I was working directly with the founder because um, they were just starting out and what they were talking about is their value proposition ended up being a bit different to what they thought it was going to be. So the first thing I did with them was working with, alright, so this is your concept of what you're wanting to do. Why don't we go and talk to some of your target market and actually find out how they're feeling about this because you've got this hypothesis that this is a problem that needs solved by people. So I took this founder out with me. We did a whole lot of in-depth qualitative interviews in people's homes, talking to them quite frankly about the area that we were exploring, which is in the finance area. Um, and it was a bit of a revelation for him, actually. And he changed quite a lot of the business model and where he was going as a startup as a result of actually hearing real people talk about things and discovering that the hypothesis he'd built on was fundamentally flawed. Yep but the thing he was trying to build was still really valid just with different underlying purpose. Have you ever seen any instances where uh, you know, a company or, or someone didn't invest in research and you saw <laughs> yes. some negative ramifications of that? Oh, so many times. Where do I start? Uh, I think one of my favorite ones is the company I was working for uh, was based in one of the biggest buildings in Wellington, so to put that into perspective, I think we had 23 storeys in the building, it was one of the biggest because we're a small place. Um, and they decided to redo their lifts, their elevators, and they were based in the middle of the building. And how they had it was on one side of the elevator bank all the elevators would go to the first half of the floors, and on the other side they go to the second half of the floors, the top half. But they redesigned it so that you had to go to this middle thing in between the two that you couldn't see from any of the elevator doors to decide what floor you were going to. And it would tell you what elevator you had to go to with a little arrow and you had to get around there and wait for the elevator to go up. There weren't any buttons on the inside. Clearly the designers with this had never observed anyone actually using it because first the people had to find where the buttons were and then they had to figure out what one to use and follow the arrow around. But if you didn't walk fast, <laughs> if the elevator was already there when you pressed the button, by the time you made it around there, it would have already gone. Oh, no. So you see people who are in their 60s using walking canes and all the rest, trying to navigate the system, and they'd get around there and have no idea the elevator had gone without them. And by the time they realised and went back, they'd have to go back. You know, you'd see the cycle repeated. And if Oof. they got on because somebody else had called it, it wouldn't go to their floor and there was no way for them to change it. So it was just this 
that was it's one of the most painful things I've ever seen, to be perfectly honest. And oh, okay. it was so easy to fix if they just tested that. It's so easy when we're involved in creating something to make the false assumption that we know who's going to be using it and that those people are going to be us or they're going to be people that we know. There's so much inherent bias baked in already about people's knowledge levels and skill levels and what they want and all these sorts of things that it's impossible to get things right if you don't go out there with a bit more variety. And we were connected uh, through a mutual connection in the design community here, Brian Sullivan, yeah. and he was saying that you're doing user research on user researchers. Yes. And I just thought that was really cool and meta. And uh, I wondered if you could just kind of share a little bit about what new insights you're finding and like what's the what's your kind of goals with this? Um, so the goals is probably the easier one to start with. So I've kind of got two levels of goals with this. One is because I do work for a company that is creating tools for researchers and designers. Um, as a researcher, it's part of my job to understand those researchers and designers, what their needs are, what their pain points are, um, how they're finding our tools at the moment, where the gaps are, what their goals are essentially, and help the company convert that into product strategy um, and changes and strategic direction. Where are we going? Why are we going there? How can we best help the industry? Another part of it is because Optimal Workshop was started at, by people in the UX industry, the UX industry is so incredibly important to us um, that we take education very seriously as well. So much like you're doing here with Project UX, we do a lot of educating people. And we know that um, in the past decade, the industry has changed quite a lot. And there's more and more people coming into it and entering it and more and more demand for that. So we spend quite a lot of time creating resources to help people who are coming into the UX field. So. Recently, over the last few years, that's mainly been around things like what are various techniques, how do you apply them, where are different things that you can use various tools for. And what we're finding now is we're seeing more and more people coming to us and saying, how do I actually explain what UX is to the companies I work for? How do I get buy-in to do that? And let's face it, there's been an age-old UX problem really, as long as the industry's been around. Yeah. But now we're seeing this new, it's almost like a two generations of UX people. There's the ones who were in it a good decade or so ago, who were kind of, fell into it by accident in most cases and were largely self-taught. And now the industry has grown to the point that we're seeing a lot of academic institutions um, offering courses and training. The same issues are still there, but people are coming in with different knowledge and so they're running into slightly different problems. So one thing that I'm doing at the moment is spending a lot of time with almost the last generation of the UX people, so the ones myself included, um, who have been doing UX for a good decade or so and have come up along across a lot of these issues and saying, well, how, how do you get past it? What have you learned on that journey? And how can we use that knowledge to help people who are just starting out in their career get through those barriers faster? So classic ones like the why bother with user research. If you've been doing UX for 10 years, you'll have answered that a huge number of times. So you know what works and what doesn't with getting buy-in from businesses and being able to speak businesses' languages. So how do we take that and put it in a way that people newer to the industry can use and not have to hit that same issue conti uh, continuously as well? How many UX researchers have you talked to for this project so far? Well, this particular one, um, so at the moment I'm delving especially into how researchers collaborate and engage others around research. So this has just kicked off, so I must say you're actually only the second person I've talked to because I oh. only started the project today in terms of the interviewing. Oh, cool. uh, but I've got quite a few more people lined up to talk to here in Dallas over the next few days and then in Atlanta in a couple of weeks as well. So awesome. talking to a whole bunch of people and a few back in New Zealand. Um, I've also got a couple of other researching researchers projects on the go at the same time. One that involves contextual observations, so that's going in and spending time with people as they're actually conducting a particular task or doing a certain activity. And what I'm doing there is, again, trying to understand from expert researchers how they do certain things so that we can help people new to the industry come up um, and just advance the industry overall. And that one's looking at how researchers analyse qualitative insights. The mental processes are going on behind that. What exactly are those? And those are the bit that new people can't quite grasp and we struggle to explain them because we don't necessarily understand them ourselves. I'm doing a whole lot of research at the moment to try and understand that. Um, but of course, because it's dependent on having reasonably senior researchers who are doing 
analysis of qualitative insights, it's a, a longer term project because you've got to be in exactly the right place at the right time to be able to spend a couple of days just sitting watching them analyze. Do you have any advice for aspiring you know, UX researchers who are like really trying to learn this or break, break into the field? Uh, what, what sort of feedback could you offer them? Uh, such a common question. Um, if you really want to be doing UX, then start doing UX. Seriously, it's, you can't wait for a job offer to come to you. I was actually talking to one of the local researchers about this today, um, and I'm gonna second some of the advice that she gives people as well, because I fundamentally believe in it too, is if you want to get into this field, you need to create opportunities, and no one's gonna do that for you. It might be that you're working in whatever your other job might be, if you're, whatever that is, and it could be anything. So it might be that you're a waitress even, or working at the local, um, pub or anything like that, look for opportunities to improve things. Look for opportunities to identify what problems people have, what experiences they're wanting and why, and change things and make suggestions. And all of that is still part of UX. It's not just about online either. That's a mistake a lot of people make to begin with, is thinking UX is about online and maybe mobile these days. It's, it's about everything. It's about physical spaces. It's about interactions with people. It's about contact centers. It's about chatbots. It's, it's yeah. everything. So. Whatever you're doing and wherever you are, just look for those opportunities. Um, if you can't find them, create them. Go and talk to a volunteer organisation or you know, a local daycare centre or somewhere similar and say, hey, can I do a bit of research and help you solve a problem? What advice could you give a, a, an entrepreneur in, in terms of the value of investing in research and the way they can go about it to really help? Uh, well, if you really start the journey, is the right time to do it. So if you're an entrepreneur, you've got an idea, you've got something you're passionate about, you've got a hypothesis. You need to test that hypothesis right at the very start, because that hypothesis comes from your own knowledge, your own experience, and your own view on the world, and the lens in which you view things. The very first thing you should be doing is assuming that your hypothesis is incorrect, and going out to prove whether it is or not. Because if you find out that your hypothesis is incorrect and you've already invested three years of your life and a huge amount of funding into that hypothesis, what are you going to do at that point? Whereas if you go out and you take your hypothesis at the beginning, you assume it's wrong, you test the heck out of it, you might find out it's right, in which case, great. You also means you've got a lot of fodder for actually going out there and trying to get rounds of investment and all the rest, which is great. Confidence, you know, you're on the right path. Um, and if you find out it's wrong, then you're usually going to come up with another idea, because if you're an entrepreneur, you know, that sort of mindset anyway, you're going to come up with another idea as a result of doing that research that is going to be valuable and does have opportunity. So just try to break the idea you've come up with. Any final thoughts for the viewers out there about just value of UX and uh, why you're so passionate about it and just kind of general things? Just makes sense. Why wouldn't you? I mean, if you're trying to create something, whatever it is, you're creating something with, some, with an end person in mind. If you don't understand who they are and what they want and how they act and whether they actually want this thing, why are you bothering? It's, to me, it's, it's fundamental. You know, design lines on parks, right? You see the classic thing where someone's made this lovely public park mm -hmm. and you see all the beautiful footpaths and all the rest of that and then you see dirt tracks where people have cut corners. That's because people designed a thing without knowing what it was people wanted. Right. Yeah, same sort of thing. Don't be the landscaper who puts out the beautiful path that no one walks on. Be the person who understands where people are going and design for that and everything's going to be a lot more successful for you, your customers. Yeah. Great. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. I hope that both of these conversations were illuminating. Uh, you know, uh, I definitely hope our viewers can take away something from this and uh, really just go out there and think about you know, why uh, investing time and resources into research is just so critical uh, because I just, like you said, it's fundamental and it really should be. So, well, thank you again. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, we're signing off today. This has been uh, Kat from uh, Optimal Workshop, and uh, thanks again. Yeah. All right. Thanks for having me. Bye, everyone. Bye.